Hey people, what's happening? Dave Solentano here with our Wednesday night guitar tricks class. Free one for everybody on YouTube. Hey, we're working on weeks two of three for the two-hand tapping. If you were trying to find me the last couple Wednesdays, I was actually at a couple gigs with the band. Uh, so I skipped last two weeks. So today we're going to resume with the two-hand tapping. We started a few weeks back, three weeks back. On the first week, a quick little recap, if you missed it, uh, we were working on just single finger tapping, tapping with the index finger only, um, and working through some some cool ideas uh, just with the scales. Um, like one of them was this. Kind of like the lick Eddie Van Halen does is in the beat it solo. One more time. Also working with pentatonic scales and moving across the fretboard. That was that one. And in descending. Okay, that kind of stuff. And also um, a, a descending on a high E string with a little sequence lick like King Bay Mountstein or Paul Gilbert. But when you pick that note, you know, it's fun to pick it fast. It's a great picking exercise. But you can really kind of hear the pick hitting the strings, right? If you do it with two-hand tapping, it sounds a lot cleaner. Okay. That was pretty much the material we went over three weeks ago. That's called two hand tapping week one of three. You can find it on guitar tricks, YouTube channel. Uh, look for that title two hand tapping week one of three. You can open up the text box underneath the video and you'll see the print curriculum option and you can print this out. Okay. So we're not going to go over that today. We're moving on today. We're going to work on two fingers, index and middle finger for tapping some stuff. Okay. Welcome in, people. It's good to see some of the names here in the chat area. Let's see. we got Steve. Hello. Some of the usual suspects. Richard, Alex. Cool. Craig, right on. Jimmy, right on, right on. Cool, cool. I also posted a few uh, lessons, courses, like short little mini courses that actually have several lessons in them off of Guitar Tricks. I posted two of the links right at the top of the chat window. So if you're a Guitar Tricks member, log into your account. You can click those and you can go in and uh, explore some deeper uh, tapping. One of the courses I put up there is called Twin Tapping One. It's me teaching that one. Um, I start with the one finger stuff and it kind of builds up. There's also two hand tapping two in guitar tricks. I'm gonna post that next week when we get into playing with multiple fingers. That means not just one and two, but all the fingers. Okay, and so the two hand tapping two course that's on guitar tricks I did is pretty intense. Also, I posted a different instructor's two-hand tapping uh, course also. Okay, so you can click one of those two options. If you're not a Guitar Tricks member, you might want to consider signing up and checking them out. Um, they've got a lot of great beginner level type of lessons, but there's a lot of intense stuff in there too. Some really cool jazz course type of lessons, uh, working with chord melody and jazz chords and walking bass lines and jazz kind of jazz and jazz blues, traditional jazz. Uh, one of our instructors, Chris Schlegel, does that. He's really good at that stuff. But there's also great blues lessons too. And, you know, there's a ton of advanced stuff as well. It's not just a guitar site for beginners, although there's a lot of great easy uh, beginning type of lessons in there. Um, but there's also a lot of in intermediate and a lot of pretty intense stuff as well. Okay, so anyway, let's get on with our course here. Oh, and I need to also let everyone know that March is going to be the last month of me offering the uh, Wednesday Night YouTube class. Guitar Trick sponsors this, and they um, have me do this, but they decided they want to take a break from that for a while and put me to use in other ways on their website and uh, doing classes and some other things um, as well 
I teach a lot of one-on-one -on -one lessons with the uh, guitar trick students too. Um, but that all that stuff's still going to rock and roll and move forward. Um, we're just going to be taking a break from this for a while. Not sure if and when we're going to come back to the YouTube classes. Remember, Mike, some of you might know one of the other instructors, Mike Alexi. He used to do the Wednesday or the Friday night YouTube class. Okay. And he, he was a great instructor, um, but they just had him doing other things with the site. He's doing a ton of the song lessons on the site right now. Um, but anyway, so that's that. I'll remind everyone next week and the week after. So we got three more tonight and then two more weeks of this. So at the end of March will be the last one. Okay. Sad day, I know, but life has to evolve. Okay. You can still reach out to me. You know, I'm all over, uh, you know, on Facebook and I've got my YouTube channel. You can always go to my website, datesoundtown.com and uh, text me or email me there and you can ask me questions and uh, I can help you out. Okay. So um, what we're going to do today is work on some two finger tapping ideas. Okay. So let's take a look. If you can open up the text box and print out two hand tapping week two of three, that's underneath the video right here, everybody. Okay. I got four examples. Okay. The first two, let's focus on those for a minute. What we're going to be doing essentially are some triads major and minor triads on, um, well, for the E major and E minor, actually all these today, we're going to be doing them on strings one and three. Okay. So what's kind of neat about this is you're going to see your triad shapes in a little different perspective. Okay. So for right now, go ahead and put the pick down. We're going to use the index and the middle finger to tap. And then example one is an E major triad looking like this. If you're familiar with the band from the 80s autograph steve lynch is their guitar player he um put out a, a great two-hand tapping book back in the day called i believe it's called the right touch and he was doing a lot of triad tapping ideas like this okay so we're going to take that concept and we're going to expand on it i'm going to show you some chord progressions so you can outline with it so it just doesn't sound like a little exercise but we're going to use it okay so what you want to do is basically set your left hand up on the 12th fret first string with your index, 13th fret on the third string with your middle finger. Okay. And for right now, I'm going to actually, here how overdriven that is. I'm going to actually change that sound for a minute. I'm going to go to a super clean setting here. Okay. Like this. Okay, so now I'm going to let, let the notes ring when I have this clean setting. Okay, I'm going to let the notes ring, and we're going to tap the first string, 16th fret with your middle finger, and then when I pull off, I'm going to push downwards like this. And then I'm going to tap the 16th fret third string, same thing with the index finger, though, and then I'm going to push off downwards. And notice too that I'm resting my thumb on the side of the neck for an anchor support. Okay, and if you just kind of do those, it sounds kind of neat with a clean setting, maybe a little echo or a little chorus on there. Okay, and we're doing an E major chord. So after we do that four times in the tablature, I want to end on an E note, which is, that's why I tapped the 17th fret on the second string. Okay, hear how that sounds? It's kind of a neat idea. Now, where's the root note in that little shape? Okay, that's the important thing because you can move this shape around up and down on these two strings, okay? The root note is the first string that your index finger is holding. So if I want to play, for instance, a D major triad, I'm going to move the shape down two frets so that my index fingers on the 10th fret first string. That's the D right there. Okay. If I wanted to play an A major triad like this, I would move everything down to the fifth fret first string. That's where the A is. I always keep the same geometric shapes. All right. So keep that 
first, second finger perspective the same way. We're skipping the second string and the middle fingers one fret higher than the index finger. And then the two tap fingers are four frets higher than the index finger on the left hand. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to show you some more practical ways that you can move up and around rather than jumping way far down. And part of the whole tapping thing to people is that you don't want to move the left hand until the tap finger has been applied. Because if you move the left hand beforehand, it doesn't sound good. You hear a little bit of a glitch. See, we don't want to gap. So slow motion, I'm going... And then I tap the first note of the, if I'm going to play an E major to a D major, I'm going to do the E a few times. And then before I even move my left hand, I'm going to tap the first note of the D, which is the 14th fret. I'm moving the shape down two frets. And then as soon as I tap that, I quickly move the left hand down two frets. And I just do the same thing. You can just, that's a good practice right there. Just move back and forth. Okay, it's kind of like doing eruption. If you're doing those easy little triads that Eddie does. And you try to move the left hand first, it sounds like a glitch, right? See, you can't move. Actually, that's not the right sequence. It should be. Okay, now I'm going to move the left hand only when I tap that 10th fret. So I make an even transition. Rather than. Okay, it's the trick with tapping and coordinating the two fingers takes a lot of practice, so you got to be patient, do it slowly, get the coordination down, but you don't move the left hand until the right hand has tapped the note, okay? It's real important to kind of get that down, okay? So there's our first shape, the E major, actually up the 12th and 13th fret and 16th frets. This is example one. Now let's check out example two, and then we're going to do some, some things with that. We're going to take uh, example two is the same chord E, but now we're going to do the minor version of it. Okay. So for that, you're going to actually fret the 12th fret first string with your third finger, 12th fret third string with your middle finger. So you got them like this. Okay. And then on the right hand, we're going to move the middle finger tap down to the 15th fret first string and still tap the 16 on the third string, okay? So now it's gonna go like this. Okay, so what's the difference between, can anyone tell me this? Hello, uh, Jeffrey, I see your name just popped in here. Actually, I saw it a little while ago, but hello, Jeffrey. Good to have you here. Can anyone tell me what the difference is between the E major and the E minor chord? What's the note that gets changed. Can anyone tell me that? When you go E major, E minor, E major. Richard, there you go, bud. Exactly, it's the flat third. Now, letter-wise, alphabetically-wise, Richard, what is that flat third for E minor? Because minor chords have a flat third, Majors just have a regular third, a major third, okay? So what is the note in E minor and E major? What is that third degree called that we're going to flat? You know what that is, Richard? E major. The major chords typically sound happy and bright. There you go, Richard. I knew, I knew you could do it. Usually if someone knows the intervallic terminology, like a flat third, major third, perfect fourth, flat five, they also usually can figure out the letter names too. 
So an E major chord has a G sharp. That's the high note I'm playing, the 16th fret first string. And it's also the low note on the third string, 13th fret. And then when I change this to E minor, I'm just going to lower those two G sharps down to G. But I'm going to come up with a little better fingering. I'm going to switch it to this. And the high note on the first string, 12th fret, stays the same. And the 16th fret, third string stays the same because that's the root on the first string. That doesn't change. And then the 16th fret on the third string, that's the B note. That's the fifth of the chord. That doesn't change. See here that now I got G. So the three notes for E major are E, G sharp, and B. And we can play those three notes in any order you want. It's always going to be an E major chord. And then for E minor, I'm going to lower the third, the G down, G sharp down to G. So now the three notes for an E minor chord are E, G, and B. Here are the major sounds happy. And then minor. Okay. Now check this out. This also sounds kind of neat too. Instead of hitting the notes individually and getting four notes, Manny Vibes. Hello, Manny Vibes. Good deal, man. Cool to have you here. Instead of having them like that, try to play hammer on both notes at the same time and then pull off both notes at the same time. That sounds kind of neat too. That's a neat little effect. See, this sounds really good with a clean setting with maybe a little chorus, a little compression and some reverb and maybe a little delay like I've got on here. I wrote a tune. Let me see if I can find this real quick. If you guys and folks can hang on, I'm gonna search YouTube. I'll grab my YouTube channel. On my Desert Storm CD, I have a song called Crystal Castle. Let me see if this comes up here. And I did a little live YouTube version of me playing it, which I will share with everybody. I'll do two shares with you here. Do, 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 do. Let's copy that link. Go to YouTube. Or go, yeah, here we are. Okay, that link I just put there, folks, is a YouTube link to my live version of me playing Crystal Castle. And then I'm also going to share with you the studio version for my album, Desert Storm. Oop, it's got a little lame commercial in front of it. You can skip that, people. But the studio version sounds better because it's, you know, I recorded it here in my studio. Uh, and it's just a lot cleaner sounding than the live version. Um, but I'll let you folks be the judge. So there's two, two versions of it. You can watch one live on YouTube. But what I'm doing on that is I'm doing exactly what we're talking about with these tapping two notes of a chord with the left hand, I mean the right hand. And then what I'm actually doing, though, in that song is I'm playing a power chord with the left hand. So like for an A, I think what the first part of the song is, I'm playing an A minor chord. So I play the A power chord individually. So what I'm doing is making up a little sequence with those notes. Okay, and then after doing them individually like that, I start hammering them on together like... Okay. But I'm playing them two notes, the power chord, two notes hammered at the same time. And then the two notes of the other part of the A minor chord at the same time. Kind of like what we're learning today, the two notes with the index and middle finger. But I'm making up a little rhythm with them. Okay, and then I just move up the scale with it like this. get it going 
going real quick. Hey, something like that is what the, the tune's doing. So I'm just kind of taking these ideas that are all started. The, the whole genesis of it, folks, was just this. And then thinking, that sounds cool to tap them both together, kind of like a little piano technique. But then how about create some rhythms? You know, like drummers do paradiddles, like, like they go. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Doing little patterns like that. Okay, that's not what I was doing in Crystal Castle, but something like that. I was actually going left, right, left, right, left, right. Make up that's like a drum, it's like a pattern. Do 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 do. That kind of thing. Okay, so got up just some ideas to run with. Whenever you learn something new, people try to take it and expand on it. Um, instead of just learning the lick and saying, Okay, I got that lick down, what can you how can you change it and make it a little more interesting? How can you change it and make it a little more you? You know, that's the thing. How can you incorporate it in your style so you're not just flat out stealing a Van Halen lick? Or like I was mentioning to you earlier, Steve Lynch, great guitar player from Autograph, had in his tapping book, he was doing little triads like this. So I learned those, but then I took it further. How can I make a mine? I also thought about adding the pinky and playing the same note the index does, but an octave higher. So instead of just doing two notes, okay, we've got that thing going like that. So that's, I encourage everyone just to take these ideas and try to go further with them. Okay, so let's try something for a sec. Well, actually, let's do this. Let's, Take a break on that. We're going to go down and do example three in a few minutes, which is taking example one and two and outlining a very common chord progression. But before we do that, I'm going to go back to the crunchy sound here. Give me one sec here. It's easy to change. Just pop in the number. <laughs> So as you're aware, I like doing a lot of classical music, but not in a traditional sense. I like to take it and play it on electric guitar. Doing like Mozart stuff where you're picking every note. Almost, almost every note. this let's incorporate some two-hand tapping in that uh, this vivaldi piece from uh vivaldi's four seasons called spring part of that the melody is really simple to do but then part of it that they and it's all done on violins um part of uh, in the middle of the spring piece it plays this really cool little arpeggio section 
that sounds very smooth and legato style. It reminded me that just, I thought that that would be really cool to do two hand tapping. So spring goes like this. One more time. Two, three, four. And it goes on, but then the tapping part goes. Try that one more time. section with the tapping that's done on the violins that sounded really inspired me to do it for two-hand tapping because it sounded really quick and it's just arpeggios moving up and down the uh the fretboard it all worked out to be on one string uh from the movie crossroads not quite uh alex crossroads steve i does a little excerpt from paganini's uh, one of paganini's caprices for violin in that um that i don't remember off the top of my head so i'm not going to embarrass myself and play it here but i will show you another one so it's cool to incorporate two-hand tapping into pieces of uh of music that you do with a pick like add in two-hand tapping and go back to the pick like i just did there in spring from vivaldi here's another one toccata and fugue from toccata and fugue from bach all right i've done this a lot of times before Okay, we're familiar with this. this up. I've done this a million times. One more time. Okay, slowly. Yeah, I'm really messing this up. Uh, 
you get the idea. So see, I was incorporating some, that was all done on organ. I was doing picking stuff. But then also the tapping, little triad arpeggios. There was a good one. And at the end, this part's kind of neat because this is pedal points where you're actually holding one note with the left hand and using all the fingers to tap this. And then over to the third string. And the fifth string. And then after that goes on for a while, the fugue section of Toccata and Fugue, it's got sort of the opposite pedal point idea where you're going to tap one note with your left or your right hand, 14th fret, third string, and then we're going to move the left hand down. That kind of thing. Yeah, you get the idea anyway. So that's what that's about. Try to incorporate two and tapping a little bit into your playing. Okay. I've got, if you want to learn some of these pieces, folks, uh, take some one on one lessons with me. I got tabs for them. I can go through it, show you how to do it, give you more tips, and talk to you about some of the concepts involved because there's these classical composers know their, their music stuff, all right? And they know about the scales, what chords go together, the arpeggios. They know all that good, juicy stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and move back to, now that I've taken a little break from the triads that we're doing from the packet there, I'm going to go back to the clean setting here. Okay, now let me show you this too. This is another thing. Some guitar players, notice when I do this two-hand tapping, I'm not using any string dampers, okay? But if you watch folks like Jennifer Batten, she used to play with Michael Jackson and Jeff Beck. She's a great, great guitar player, great person. In fact, she was teaching at GIT, Musicians Institute, when I was going there back in 85 and 86. Um and she would use a, a, she had some clamp device that was bolted to the headstock and then the little arm reached over and would mute the strings back here. Michael Angelo Badio also does, has a little gizmo like that too when he does his, his uh, bi-directional guitar playing. Because when you're playing with two hands, it's hard to mute the other strings. So one of my uh, students gave me this little uh, string damper device and what you do is you strap it on your guitar neck like this, okay? So this kind of eliminates the need for having to try to mute the strings because listen to this. See, everything's muted. So you just do that and then you can... See, when you stop playing, it's really quiet. talk to you about how to incorporate those in a sec but I would encourage everybody to not necessarily put a little string damper on your guitar neck like that but try to get your two-hand tapping down cleanly as good as you can without having to get one of these okay or without using one even though I've got one here I hardly ever use it though 
and you get you, you just get good at trying to mute those strings okay like when i'm when we are doing these little two finger uh triads today i'm actually resting the heel of my right hand on the thicker strings so they're not ringing okay Okay, so I'm really trying to mute the thicker strings. And then when I lift my fingers off, like uh, I'm actually not coming off the string, folks. What I'm doing is just lifting the pressure off the fretboard with the string. So see my, look at my, if I get real close here, watch my left hand fingers. See, I'm holding them down. See my middle finger? I'm not pressing. I'm touching the string, but I'm not pressing. And then when I go to this string, the third, I push it, and then I come off with the first, but I'm not coming off the string. I'm just coming off the fretboard. See those little micro motions, folks, guitar players out there? That's what you need to do to play cleanly. You don't want to go... because all kinds of stuff rings, okay? And we should actually take that concept and use that with everything you do on guitar, even playing with a pick. When you're playing your scales, don't let your fingers fly all over. Try to keep them close to the fretboard. So when you see me playing or any other guitarist that's got that technique down, Try to keep them close to the fretboard. Economy of motion. It takes practice. It takes training. But if you want to be a good player, that's what you got to do. That's part of it. Okay. So let's go down and look at example three. And then I'm going to show you something that's kind of neat here with these little two-string triads we're learning today. So example three is a common chord progression. It's E minor, D major, C major, and then we go B major, then A diminished. And then back to the E minor. So from the B, it's like a passing chord, the A diminished is. So we got, you can play them even open as cowboy chords. D, C, and then B, you have to bar it. Or you could even play B7. That sounds good. And then for the A diminished, it's kind of like doing a D chord on the wrong strings, up on strings 4, 3, and 2 at the 4th and 5th frets, and then put your pinky on the 1st string 5th fret. And you can hear that chord creates a little tension that resolves back to the, the one chord, the E minor. So let's tap out those ideas, those chords. Okay, we're going to do the E minor at the 12th fret, first and third string with your left hand. Okay, fingers two and three. And by the way, if you look up here on the right next to the notes, the little black notes in the music, even if you don't know how to read the, the music staff, don't worry about that. But on the left side of every little black dot, you'll see either a number or a letter. The number indicates the left hand fingers I would use. One is index, two is middle, three is ring, pinky's four. But today we're just going to use one and two and three. 
okay? And then the letters you see are M's and I's because that indicates when we're using the, the right-hand fingers in finger-picking terminology, I is index, M is middle, okay? So index and middle for the, the tap fingers. So the letters stand for the notes you're going to tap, the fingers you're going to use to tap. The numbers on the left side of the black dots are the uh, left hand fingers. Okay. So look down at your E minor triad. We're going to hold the 12th fret on the first and third string with your ring finger, your third finger on the first string 12th fret, and your two finger on the third string 12th fret. The right hand's going to tap middle finger on the 15th fret first string and then pull off. And then you're going to tap the 16th fret third string and pull off. Okay, so we're going to do that four times. Okay, try to let them ring. And see if I don't mute with my right hand, right? If I just hold it up like this and tap. Just the banging on the guitar causes those other strings to ring. So I'm leaning my, going to mute them with my heel of my right hand. So you don't hear it now because I'm muting. See that? I'm resting on them with that right hand. Okay, now we're going to move down to the D major, the second bar of example three. We're going to move back one fret with the left hand. Take off your third finger. Put your index on the first string, 10th fret. And then we're going to move the right hand down to 14th fret on the third and the first string. Same thing, four times. Okay, you might want to practice before even get into the next part. Just get comfortable with doing E minor to D. Remember what I said earlier, and I'll say it again here, folks. You don't want to move the left hand until the right hand's tapped its first note, because that helps you, that buys you that half second of time to get the left hand into position. See, right, I don't move my left hand until I tap. I don't move it yet, I move it right then. So you want to get used to hold being in the 12th fret position. And as soon as you hit 14 with your tap finger, get that left hand back one fret and then switch to your index on the first string. That little move. Okay. And to really get it down, if you want to get good at this, you might want to just try doing one time on each one. Like go E minor, D major. And then possibly go back and forth. Okay. And then after we do the D major four times, the next one is C major, which is the same as major. So it's going to be the same shape, two frets back. So again, I don't move my left hand until I tap 12 on the first string with the right hand. And then I go back. Okay, might want to practice that a few times. Three, four. Okay. Try it again. In fact, try to just do one on each. So you get the hang of the move. Okay. And in the next chord, the last bar for this example, or second to last bar is the B. The B from C is just one fret back, so it's not that far. You've got the C, and then we just move everything back one fret. And we're only going to do the B twice. So we're going to do the C four times and the B twice like this. repeats is the A diminished. For that, we're going to move the left hand up to the 11th fret on strings three and one. 
So you switch back to your middle and your third finger, second and third finger. And then the tap fingers move three frets to the right. Now you're up at 14th fret. So we just finished two of the B. And then don't move the left hand until you've tapped the first note of the A diminished part. Then quickly move your left hand up to the 11s and then do that one twice. I want to practice the B to the A diminished a few times. Okay, and then we go back, repeat sign, we go back to the E minor. So from the A diminished, all we have to do is move the left hand one fret to the right. Okay, so we got A diminished twice. Now the E minor. It's slow. It's a cool little piece. Hey, second chance band. Marianne's here. Good to see you, Marianne. I got to remind everyone, too, if you've just chimed in or just piped in, that we're at Guitar Tricks is going to be taking a break from doing these Wednesday night YouTube classes with me for a while. They're going to put me to other use on their website, um, doing other instructional things. But it's been a long run. It's been fun, but we're going to do. Two more weeks after this, and at the end of March will be our last uh, Wednesday night session, and we'll take a break from this for a while, okay? If you remember, Michael Lexi from Guitar Tricks also was doing a Friday night YouTube class as well, and he they had him doing some more songs right now. So anyway, just want to let everybody know, a reminder, and I'll remind everyone next week too. So, okay, back on track here. So we got example three. Just take your time with it going slowly. So as a wrap up here, let me show you something that's really cool, folks. The shapes we've just learned, major and minor and diminished, on strings one and three, they're the exact same shapes on strings two and four as well. So watch this. If I'm on strings one playing E major, one and three, playing example one, and I just hop everything up one string to the second and fourth string, do the same thing, Okay, that first finger on the first string, that's my root note. That's an E on the 12th fret first string. So that, that's important to know so you know what chord you're playing. Now, if I move it up a string, my index finger is on the root note on the second string. Does anyone know what that 12th fret second string note is? And consequently, what would be the name of this chord? rather than moving that second string 12th fret is the same as the first string 7th fret. So instead of doing this, folks, you're right, Joe D, Joe D1, cool. Yep, it's a B note. So rather than moving from E major to B major back five frets, that's a lot of motion. When we're playing guitar, you want to do economy of motion with everything, with your the way you lift your fingers off the fretboard. Don't let them fly all over the place. When we're doing chord changes, that's why learning triads is real important because when you're playing triads with a chord progression, rather than playing like D to A, and then B minor to F sharp minor, 
right? I can do it all in this territory up here if I know my triads and their inversions. That was your D, A, B minor, F sharp minor. Okay, just the same as doing this. Just these are all root inversions. Up here I was doing, uh, actually these were actually first inversion. And then I start first inversion, second inversion, second inversion, and root position or root inversion. Okay, so it's important to know your triads, but that's something else we can get into later. Plus Guitar Tricks has a whole ton of great lessons on triads as well um, to go through exercises and putting them together in musical examples, not just learning the shapes, but making them sound like music. Okay. Got good lessons on guitar tricks for that. Okay. So what we're doing here with our tapping, everyone, instead of doing and moving five frets back, I can just hop up a string and I hardly have to move at all, except just a little bit North. Okay, so having said that, let's try this little chord progression. Write these chords down. This is a good one. We're, we're going to do the chords to Pachelbel's Canon. It's a D major to A major, B minor, F sharp minor, then G major, D major, G major, A major, and then it repeats. So I'm going to find the root note of all those chords on the first or second string. And then I'm going to play whether it's major. I'm going to do the major shape. So the D, first string, 10th fret, and I'm going to, is the D. So I'm going to play the major shape. Then the next one's A major. So instead of moving way back to the fifth fret, I'm just going to move up a string, do the same shape here. Okay. Now the next chord is B minor. I'm going to go back to the first string, seventh fret on the first string, and I'm going to do the minor shape we learned. I'm going to, I'm just toggling between example one and two, major shape, minor shape. Okay, the minor shape for B would be at the seventh fret. And then the next chord's F sharp minor. I'm going to move up a string. So now F sharp's on the second string, uh, seventh fret. Okay, so, so far we got this sound, D major, A major, B minor, F sharp minor. Okay, next one's G major. Well, I can just move one fret to the right and switch it from the F sharp on the second string to G on the second string, eighth fret. D major, I'm just going to move back to the first example, or the first one we did, 10th uh, fret, first string. And then back to the G again. And then the last chord is A major. So I can just move the G two frets to the right, and I'm back to A. And then jump down a string and repeat. same time I tap. idea folks if you leave your fingers down now let me throw one more thing at you what if we like to play that with a little more of a hard rock tone 
Okay, let me go back to this setting here. It's kind of like an 80s tone. Now, if I leave my fingers down with this, it doesn't sound too good. Listen. Okay, don't want to torture your ears any more than you need to. What we got to do if you're going to play with a little bit of overdrive is toggle your fingers back and forth by letting them, taking the pressure off of the fretboard, but don't come off the string. Because if you come off the string when you toggle, it's kind of messy. You could always use one of these string dampers I mentioned earlier, wrap that around your neck, okay? But that always isn't the most economical thing to do, right? And not everyone's going to have one on their guitar ready to go. So you want to practice these little subtle finger movements. This is part of being a good guitar player is controlling your fingers to just come off the fretboard, but not off the string. See, I'm doing it for the most part. I'm trying to toggle them back and forth. See how my fingers watch if I go at this angle. See what I'm doing here? Just micro motions. Okay. So, does anyone have any comments or thoughts about any of this stuff? Any questions about it? I've given a lot of pointers and played a lot of stuff. Next week, we're going to get into using all the fingers. I got some really good exercises for developing strength and coordination there. Right now, most of the time you might not be tapping with all your fingers, but like I showed in Takata and Few, that part worked out really good for me to do with to use all four fingers. Another thing, too, maybe we'll get into the pinky doing That's the chord progression of Pocket Bell's Canon as well, but done as a triad idea on the first, uh, the second string. Just making up a lick, a little sequence with the three notes of each chord. Okay, that might be something else we can talk about next week when we get into that four finger. So I'm going to start wrapping it up, everybody. Steve, appreciate everyone showing up here. Jimmy G, yep. Everyone's got a lot of practicing to do, including me, people. I still practice a lot. I love playing guitar. I love teaching, love helping other guitar fans get better on their instrument. And uh, I practice a lot, a couple hours a day. All right, that doesn't include teaching. I teach about six, seven hours a day. Um, but I practice a lot, got my band, work on practicing tunes for the band and just all kinds of stuff, fun stuff. So keep practicing, keep the faith, everybody. Don't give up. Just keep chipping away at it a little bit every day. Do what you can. 
And the important thing is just fall in love with playing guitar. So it's what you think about, it's what you want to do more than almost anything else in the world. And you'll get good at it. Just keep chipping away. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Second chance band. Thanks for stopping by. Good. And I see you're doing a lot of uh, ukulele lessons. Good for you. Keep that up. That's very popular too. Craig, appreciate it. We'll see you at your next lesson, Craig. Richard, same thing. We'll see you around. Steve, Jimmy G, everyone. Be good. We'll see you next week. Many vibes. All right, cool. Yeah, yay. Alex, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, everyone, have a good night. I'll see you next Wednesday, and we'll do week three of three for this two-hand tapping. Peace, everyone. Keep those fingers flying. See ya. Bye.